Hey, Pillar family and friends. My name is John. I serve as one of the pastors uh, here for our church family, and I'm joined by Sarah and Kyle. Kyle also serves as one of our pastors. They've been member. How long have you guys been in Okinawa now? Two years? Kyle's uh, been here forever. Me, a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah, almost three years. From yeah. Me. So they've been a part of our church family for a while, and Kyle's been serving on our uh, pastoral team. So very thankful to have them both as part of our church family. So what we want to do right now is have a conversation together uh, for you and for your missional community. And when we, as we wrap up here um, in a few moments, we'll wrap up with some questions for you to consider together um, as a missional community. But what we want to talk about is, uh, first, why the temporary suspension in our worship gatherings? And then we'll transition to talk about how uh, really the suspension is not a threat for us. Um, it really plays to the strength of our church family based on what we believe uh, about who we are according to the gospel and what Jesus calls us to. And then we'll talk about how you, if you're not already connected with a missional community, could, uh, how we can help you get connected so that you're not alone kind of in this period of isolation that really matters to us. And then we'll spend some time in Psalm 46, and that's exactly what you're going to do as a missional community as well. So we'll just be teeing it up for you, and uh, we'll, we'll wrap with some questions. So you guys ready for this? Yeah, None of absolutely. us are like professionals. We're all feeling a little insecure about how this is going down. So absolutely. Um, we're not even trying. Like here are my notes. We're not reading off of anything. And uh, we're just going to roll with it and have a good time. And, and hopefully it's an encouragement to you too. So let's talk first, Kyle and Sarah, about why we temporarily suspended our worship gatherings. Not really so much what's going on in the world. Everybody hears enough of that in the media and you know on social media, but um, just, just why we're doing what we're doing. Sure. And uh, the first thing we want to say is, I think, just to help people understand the motive behind why we made this decision, uh, none of us in the church family are, um, you know, none of us are medical experts. None of us are, some of us are recovering conspiracy theorists, but there was no amount of like conspiracy theory in the conversation. Yeah. None of us study immunizations or infectious diseases. So we're not, we're not trying to play the expert and make this decision for people based on what we think is right. Sure. We made the decision as a team of pastors. We met on, was it early Friday? It was early Friday. Mm -hmm. And kind of the conversation covered a good part of the day. Um, and really, we made the decision based on our shared desire to submit to Jesus. Uh, he's our king. We want to submit to him. And what Jesus calls us to is that we would represent him well as his family of servant missionaries here in Okinawa. And so we just we have this shared conviction that we in this season would represent him well, first by submitting to the leaders that he's appointed over us. And it kind of happened first in the Navy Marine Corps world, like they shut all the chapels down and they were really urging people not to gather in groups any larger than 20. And it really didn't happen. Um, so we made that decision on Friday and then the Air Force kind of followed suit for the Navy and Marine Corps because that's the way it goes, right? That's the way it goes. Um, today, where they made the announcement that they were also shutting their chapels down and actually the person who made that decision uh, I guess we could we could use the word he urged the churches out in town to follow suit. He understands he doesn't have authority over them. Uh, nonetheless, while he doesn't have authority, they don't have authority over our church as a family, they do have authority over most of our church members. So in order to help our members and attendees submit well to the leaders appointed over them, that was our first motive. I think our second motive in submitting to Jesus was our desire to love our neighbors well. There is a lot of uncertainty um, there is a lot of concern. And so we don't want to be the family that meets as if there's not a problem and as if we can't help or hurt the situation and have people who are not yet Christians watching us look and be like, don't they care? Like, yeah, we don't like, want to, are they not taking this seriously? Exactly. We don't want to confirm maybe what's maybe some suspicions that people already have about Christians that we just care about ourselves and we're selfish. Jesus calls us to love our neighbors and to care about the well-being of the city. And so I think that was the second motive. We felt like this decision communicates that we do love our neighbors and we do care. Mm -hmm. And I'll just be honest, Jesus also calls us to love one another well in the family. Mm -hmm. And look, our family is full of young families with lots of little children run, uh, running around. And it's no secret, our facilities aren't the greatest. Like we slam a lot of kids into some small Quite spaces. Few, yes. Right. So nervous moms, rightfully so. Expectant mothers who wonder about how coronavirus might impact a pregnancy, all these kinds of things. So we want to be sensitive to that and love our family well. And so that was our, our third motive. Um, do you guys want to throw in on, on that at all? Well, I, I kind of want to pick your brain, John. What about other churches 
outside of pillar and outside the gate who choose to still meet? What's our posture toward them? Yeah, that's, man, that's a really good question because as far as I know, right now we are the only church out in town that has temporarily suspended uh, worship gatherings. In fact, I was part of a conversation with multiple pastors on the island on Friday. It was a difficult, not difficult, it was a good conversation, but each pastor, each pastoral team is wrestling through or was wrestling through what decision to make. Mm -hmm. And so when, uh, let's be careful here, two observations. The first one is we're not the only ones who care about representing Jesus well, yeah. right? Yeah. So we care about that, and that's why we made the decision we did. But they also care about that same thing. They love Jesus, want to represent him well. They love people. And so in their own context, they decided that mm, persevering was the right thing to do. So as a church family, we should have a humble posture and we should refrain from assuming motive. Actually, the, the motive we should assume for all these churches is they love Jesus yeah. and they love people. We just walked it out differently and we're making different decisions. But there are brothers and there are sisters, so we pray for them, we encourage them. It's not a competition, not a contest, and we're not going to judge people. Um, so let, yeah, let's just have a humble posture. And that's a really good question. Absolutely. Um, oh, and maybe the second thing. Yeah. Um, and I don't even really need to say this for our church family because, man, I just love our church family and we have some really committed members. But in seasons like this, this is not the season to walk away from your church. If you're a member, mm. if you disagree with the decision that's being made. Now, I'm not worried about any of our members walking away from Pillar because they're yeah. angry that we, we shut down. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. But in a season like this, you could be tempted, man, I really, our church is weak, we shut down, or man, our church is um, uh, just kind of bullheaded, like, don't we care about people? Why are we going? I need yeah. to go find a new church. No, this is precisely the season where we demonstrate our love for Christ and our love for people by uh, persevering and by submitting to the community, the church that we're in, mm -hmm. and walking through these difficult seasons. So I guess it's more for a church family. Like if you get into conversations with friends who kind of ask you, man, our church made this decision. I don't agree with it. Should we go and find a new church? No, no, you should stick yeah. it out with your church family, Absolutely. love, serve, submit, and walk through this difficult season together. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. And then I guess the question is, is pillar shutting down or shutting down our Sunday morning gatherings, but is the church itself and all the functions that it has, um, is it shutting down? And mm -hmm. John, through our conversations, and Sarah and I, I'd say the answer is no. Pillar itself as the church is not shutting down. Right. We aren't canceled. No, not right. canceled. We didn't cancel subscription. Not yeah, at all. Not, yeah. We are still going to act out of our, one, our faith in Jesus in community. And so we're going to do that by, one, yes, canceling the Sunday morning gathering. Temporarily suspending yes, Sunday morning. Yes, yeah, right. I should watch my words. <laughs> we're not canceling it forever. Um, yes, temporarily suspending the Sunday morning gathering. And then pushing into our missional communities who really, yeah. they are for this time. This yeah. is the moment for the missional communities yeah. to shine. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants what's happening right now. Yeah. Uh, we live in a broken world and broken things happen. And it's better that we're able to meet every other week or every week. However, when we kind of realized, man, we, we shouldn't take a break, a part of me was like, man, this is a really an opportunity for us as a family to see that this plays into the strength of who we are as mm -hmm. we're being shaped by the gospel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, just the, the sermon series that we just got through, we talked about how we are a family of servant missionaries. That is, that is our identity in Christ, that God adopts us into his family through Jesus. And like Jesus, sends us out as servants and fills us with his spirit so that we can be missionaries. Yeah. And so families, specifically families of servant missionaries, express themselves in different ways. Yeah. Yes. So we view... Sunday mornings as a big family reunion where you have all your cousins, aunts, all the cousins, uncles, all of them, grandparents all together. The to weird uncles, the funny uncles, <laughs> the, all the yes, uncles to celebrate yeah. our father. So that's how we view Sunday mornings, and um, and that's why it's okay that you don't know everybody in a big public worship gathering. Absolutely. It's impossible. Right. Like you have varying levels of relational intimacy with your extended family. That's true yeah. in the church too, right? That's not threatening to us. Yeah, right. So and so yeah, then we view MCs as your immediate family where you're walking life on life with throughout yep. the week. So you're staying in contact with them. You're seeing how they're doing. You are going out to eat with them. Mm -hmm. You're having them over all the time. And then we have fight clubs. And fight clubs, we view that as kind of like your mom and your sister, if you're a girl, or as a guy. Um, meeting your with brother, your brothers. Yeah, yeah. brother yep. or dad or whatever. Yep. And so, um, yeah, you just meet, and you really get to deeper issues 
with the same sex that you wouldn't have with right. the opposite sex. Sure. So yep, yeah, so that's how we view Sunday mornings and MC and Fight yeah. Club. And right. yeah, so we can still meet as the church. It's just as an MC and as a Fight Club for yep. right now. Yep. Healthy families express themselves in all three of those ways, right? You, you are connected with your extended family because you, you rally around your kind of the patriarch of the family. So for us, that's God the Father. Um, he is, he, we gather on Sundays to celebrate him and to rehearse our identity, our family identity in him. Jesus is the hero of our family. He's our rescuing king, but he's also our older brother. So all those dynamics are there, right? And I love the way you talk about our missional communities. Like that's who we sit around the kitchen table with. We laugh with them. We cry with them. Right. And um, yeah, just a really good summary of who we are as a family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have to recognize that on Sunday mornings, there are some of you who are not connected to an MC. And so for the people who are not connected mm -hmm. to an MC, we don't want to leave them on the fringes. Right. We want to provide them opportunities mm -hmm. to get involved and get connected. So John, how do we do that? How do we get them connected? Yeah, I mean, like Kyle said, many of you will be watching this with your missional community. And that's fantastic. That's, that's our desire. But many of you will be listening to this online kind of through our podcast stream or watching the video um, on YouTube alone or uh, just with your, with your family. And I don't mean the just in a derogatory sure, yeah. way, but absent community in, in the life of the church family. And um, look, we, we want you connected to the life of our family. Jesus wants you connected with the life of his family. God the Father adopted you into a family for his fame, for your good, and for the good of the family. So our heart here is that you would be connected. It always has been, but I think especially in this season, it's just weighing on us even more where we, knowing that we can't gather as a big family on Sundays, there could be a long gap where people are in isolation from the church, not rehearsing the gospel, not being encouraged, people aren't praying for them. Uh, we don't want that at all. So listen, if you're not sitting there watching this with, an, with a missional community, uh, would you be willing to do me a favor if you want this? Because we're we're not a cult. We don't force this, and you know we yeah, yeah we're we're not a cult. Uh, yeah. Contrary to yeah, we're just not, and yeah. we're not going to force anybody to do this if they don't want to. But we would like to serve you in this way. And so, what you could do if you'd be willing, you could email me jransom at pillarokinawa dot com. You could text me or call me zero eight zero four four zero zero four six eight eight. You could email Bethany, our lead administrator. It's Bethany at PillarOkinawa.com. Anybody on the team will work hard to get you connected. We are here to serve you, and we want you robustly participating in the life of a missional community. And uh, what we're also urging some of our MCs is this. In this season, some of them are already bursting at the seams yeah. anyway. So we're urging each of our MCs to consider if they have the possibility like right now to multiply so that mm -hmm. more people can participate. Yeah. And we're looking for, we're looking to stand up temporary. Or, yeah, that, yeah, that was a funny way to say it. We're temporary. We're looking to stand up temporary <laughs> missional communities for yeah. this difficult season because we need more host families. Yeah. So again, if that's you, you've been hanging out with our family for a little while and you believe what we believe, you're passionate about the things that we're passionate about and you think you have the capacity to host during this season, because we don't know how long this season could last. Could be a month, could be less, could be longer. Um, again, just reach out to Bethany or reach out to myself, and um, we will do whatever we can to, to help make that happen. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, so now that we've kind of discussed our heart on the issue, um, we also want to discuss Psalm 46, yeah. which our missional communities will be breaking out into uh, Sunday, hopefully when you're viewing this or right after. So what I'd like to do just for us is just read through Psalm 46 Great. and then ask some questions and then leave our missional communities with some questions yeah. to ponder as a group and as a family. Love it. Let's do it. All righty. So Psalm 46 reads this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. God utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the sphere. spear. 
He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our mm, fortress. Good. Mm. So this Psalm, Psalm 46, it's broken up into three different sections. And there's two refrains, or two refrains, two areas that repeat each other to kind of give us a framework of the message. And that is in verse seven. It says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord, of, the God of Jacob is our fortress. It says it again in 11. So that's kind of the beat behind the Psalm. Yeah that God is our fortress, he is with us. Looking at the first section, one through three, it kind of describes mountains falling into the heart of the sea, waters roaring in foam and mountains trembling. I wanna ask in the midst of COVID-19, where it seems that the world might be falling around us, can we relate to the Psalm right here? I believe so. Um, yeah, like there are so many uh, members of our church who are fearful for their mm. lives. They're yeah. scared that they're going to get it. They're scared that their family members back home are going to yeah, get it. I think that's the bigger one because we're a young community. Yeah. We're kind yeah. of removed from it. Last week we joked about two movies, like we're living in the Truman Show while the oh, rest yeah. of the world is living I Am Legend. Uh, that's what. I, this is what I get for joking about that now, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. This is what I get. But, but we all have older family members. My grandmother is very old and yeah. weak. Um, actually all three of my living grandparents are. And I think that's the root of concern for a lot of us Yeah. Um, and what may happen to them for sure. Yeah. Like my grandma, she's very old and she's with my parents right mm -hmm. now. And so, um, yeah, they're just trying to keep her inside and trying to keep it, her safe. Yeah. And yeah, but there's other concerns like family members are losing their jobs back in the yeah, States that's true. and mm -hmm. you so know, they might struggling not be able to, to provide. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, so there's a lot of concerns, a lot of fears, so I think it's very relevant in this situation. Definitely, and I think being overseas, like in Okinawa, we're not able to help in every way that we would like for our families back right. in the States. Yeah, we're absent. Yeah, and also even just communicating with our family back in the States, they are dealing with things on a larger level mm -hmm. than yeah. we are here, right. yeah. and that could make us more anxious and yeah. more fearful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so while the psalmist in his language is describing and illustrating mountains falling into the heart of the sea. He's, he's just, he's describing the earth kind of falling yeah. apart. It's poetry. It's, exactly. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. And then he says how the people of God respond is without fear. Mm. They're to know that God is our refuge and he is our strength. I want to ask though, for us, is that our natural mm. inclination in the midst mm. of the world falling apart? COVID-19 is our natural inclination to avoid fear and mm. trust in God as our strength. What do you What do you guys have? No, it's not my natural <laughs> inclination. Not mine um, my natural inclination is definitely to right. fear and to try to take matters into my own hands yeah. and try to manipulate the situation to go according to my plan. And so, in this situation, you can't do that. Um, Especially in military communities, like yeah. people back in the states, they can't control the thing, the constraints that they right. have. In the military, we have even more of that. Right. Where, right. And so, yeah, like. For me, I feel completely powerless to um, like save my family. For me, I feel okay in Okinawa, but that could change. Um, but yes, yeah, so I feel completely powerless with my family, with my grandma, who's really old. And so, yeah, I mean, the only thing we can do is trust God in the middle of this, even though it is hard to actually put our trust mm -hmm. and hope in him. Yeah. So. yeah, I agree with Sarah. My natural inclination is towards... Um, fear or anxiety or just you you I take my eyes off of God I forget that he's a good father you mm -hmm. look at the chaos around the world and you can be consumed by that um, you can just begin to question and question and question um, um, so yeah I, my natural inclination much like yours is not to trust God it's actually mm -hmm. the opposite it's to think about all the things I can't control mm -hmm. or to look at the mess that other people are made just all these things other yeah. than looking to Christ and trusting him. Yeah. Yeah. And in the next section, verses four through seven, it shows how God is providing for his people. Mm. It says, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of his people, that God's in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God's going to help her. So we see God as being with his people. He's dwelling there with presence and also his permanence is there. Yep. And so how do we see God specifically providing for people in our context in these times? Mm. What do you guys think? Mm. 
I mean, people are going to expect me to say this, but I see him providing through the life of his family. Like mm. we are, we, we represent Christ where his body, like the father provides for his people in a lot of ways, present spirit, but through the presence of his family. And mm. that's why I think we should push back on this term social distancing. Oh, yeah. Like the only time people social distance, well, think Garden of Eden, the first instance of social distancing, mm. Adam and Eve hide in shame, right? Yeah. And that's a symptom of our rebellion. But, mm. but God, it says, is our, he's a very present help. He's near us. So mm. while we ne may need to be physically distant, we don't disengage. Uh, the Father is present with us through the Spirit, and we are compelled to be present with in the lives of our uh, church family members. Um, again, if not physically, spiritually and relationally. But, oh, yeah, he, the Father provides through his family so beautifully. And, he, and yeah. he, calls us, he calls us to look at something. So in the remaining verses, the psalmist himself calls us to behold the works of the Lord, to look at the devastations on the earth, but also to look how God makes war cease mm. and how God can end warfare. And then the words in verse 10 come from God. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And I, I feel like in the midst of COVID and in the midst of troubles and trying times where we're not in control, the answer is to reflect on the works of God and to experience stillness. So mm -hmm. how do we fight for stillness mm -hmm. now? Yeah, so, I mean, I don't think this is my natural inclination as well, but he wants us to stand firm on his promises and his word um, and just the fact that he's with us through the midst of it. And so, um, yeah, so standing on his word and being in prayer, knowing that we can't control the situation, so we have to look to God and um, be dependent on him. And yeah, so... Yep. Mm -hmm. that is good. And I mean, again, just being reminded, like I, we don't do this well on our own. That's the reason yeah. the father adopts us into a family. We need our family. And so we fight for stillness. We work for it um, in the context of family with the support of our brothers and sisters, our moms and our dads. Not that we have any, we don't have many spiritual moms and dads in this family. We're also young, but um, with our family fighting for each other. Yeah. And the, the natural inclination again presents itself as I'm going to hide by myself mm -hmm. and I'll go try to experience stillness with mm -hmm. God on my own. And there's mm -hmm. a place for that. Sure. But absolutely. I feel like God calls us into a family. Yep. That's where the MC piece comes yep. to practice stillness together, yep. to rehearse the gospel, yep. to go over his word, to reflect and to find that stillness as one family. Yep. Yeah. And sure. I also think that it talks about beholding the works of the Lord. And so reading mm. just different stories throughout the Bible, how God was providing mm. for his people. Then also looking at or thinking about past stories in our own lives right. and seeing how God provided for us. Yep. And letting people in our missional communities tell their own stories of God's faithfulness then because those stories will fuel yeah. our faith in reminding us that God has yeah. always shown himself to be faithful, even when we doubt, even when we doubt his timing, even when we're fearful, he has always proven himself to be faithful to us. So when we can't see that or we're doubting it, it's even more important to be in the context of family mm -hmm. so they have eyes to see for us. They can help us. They can Absolutely. help us see. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, that kind of wraps up Psalm 46. I hope um, in your missional communities you'll reflect on those words and, and fight for stillness together in the, in the midst of what's going on around us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we, what we want you to do as a missional community now, um, if you would read this text together, read Psalm 46 together, ask some of the questions, same questions maybe that we've asked and started to answer. We recognize this was a very quick introduction. Sure. Uh, we're working on a sermon series for this season that's going to be focused on this psalm and others. Uh, we'll, we'll be calling it Be Still. Sure. And so we'll be in Psalm 46 again, but we'll do a deeper dive and we'll be in some neighboring psalms as well. Um, just kind of queuing them up for you as missional communities so that we can fight together to be still, trusting our good Father. And so what we want you to do is read uh, read this psalm again. And as a family, ask yourself, as a missional community, discuss whatever you want about the psalm. Sure, yep. And then kind of work on, on these questions. What does it look like for us to, based on these truths, to walk this out as a, as a family? And what does it look like as, so we're not just a family, we're a family of servants. What does it look like for us? What would it look like for us to serve each other in this season? And we're not just servants, we're a family of servant missionaries. So what would it look like for you, missional community, to be a missionary to your neighbors who are living in fear? Some of them may have real problems that they need help with. This is you know, at the end of the psalm where it talked about God being glorified in mm -hmm. everything, even in tragedy. Like in all of this brokenness, at the end of the day, his glory will be seen even more clearly. And the way he's going to do that is through his church, through his family. So it's a privilege for us 
we exist in this brokenness for the fame of, of Christ, for the fame of our Father, and we exist for his fame by living selfless lives for the good of other people. Absolutely. And uh, man, Kyle, you wrote a blog a little bit earlier this week. Yeah. It's uh, people can find it at just camping. That's just, just, just camping with a K. Camping with a K. Dot yeah. com. And Kyle wrote a little bit about the coronavirus. And you, we don't have time to talk about it now, but you brought that point out. When we're fueled by the gospel, our lives will be increasingly selfless mm -hmm. for our Father's fame and for the good of other people, even yeah. if it puts us at risk because we live with the hope of the gospel and the hope of our resurrection mm -hmm. in Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Th these moments are cosmic amplifiers of the gospel when his church, when Jesus' church just goes and lives the way he the, really the way he has provided for us um, to live. And when we go out and display that, the world around us looks, beholds the gospel and sees the message they're dying to yeah. see. So think about this. We talk about this all the time here at Pillar. Uh, the DOD did not give you orders to Okinawa. God the yeah. Father ordained that you would be here for this season. Mm -hmm. He used the military to get you here. But who knew? None of us knew that we would exist in Okinawa in this season of the coronavirus yeah. to be Jesus representatives to serve people at cost to ourselves and to point them to our Father, um, even maybe at risk to ourselves for His fame and for the good of others. That's why we're here now. That's why mm. we're here. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Beauty in the in the brokenness. Yeah. All right. So we're probably just about out of time. We need to give it to you to um, work through Psalm 46. If you're in a missional community, you'll, maybe you'll sing together, you'll pray together, you'll work through the Scripture. You're going to share communion together. You're going to feast over a meal together. And uh, we just want you to know that we love you. We're here to serve you. We're praying for you. I mean, I, I just, I love you as a church family. I've been so encouraged already in these, these few days. We're just kind of out of the ordinary yeah. people, just the way people are responding, uh, shaped by the gospel. Sarah, could you wrap us with prayer? Would you be all right doing that? Yeah, sure. Right, thanks. Um, God, thank you so much for this day. I thank you so much that um, we can meet as the body of Christ and um, MCs all over Okinawa. I praise you for that. I just pray that um, that your glory, that you would just uh, glorify yourself in COVID-19 all throughout mm -hmm. the world. And I feel like you've already done that. And I know you will because um, you glorify yourself in everything. And I just pray that as your church, uh, we could just glorify you um, as well. And yeah, and I pray that as MCs meet, um, that... It'll just be a sweet time of fellowship, of encouraging one another. Um, I just pray that Psalm 46 will bring mm -hmm. comfort to so many people. And um, yeah, I just ask all these things yeah. in your name. Amen. 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 Well, guys, this has been fun. We should do it again sometime soon, sure. maybe next week. Maybe next yeah. week. <laughs> yeah. All right. Love you guys. Have a great time with your MC. And if you're not connected, please reach out to us so we can help you get connected. Love you. Awesome. Have a good See day. You guys.